drive was rough. The scenery was a 10 out of 10, but the enjoyment factor was a zero out of 10. I'm pretty amazed that's even a road open to the public. I'm not gonna say I'm the best driver around, but it took every ounce of driving skills I had to get through the mud, uh, some rock crawling through boulders. Uh, it was pretty sketchy and not really a place I wanna be stranded. In the middle of a wildlife refuge, it gets on average of like seven people a day through it. I don't know if anyone would have ever seen you. You made it through. Uh, it was an adventure. The scenery is awesome, but I give it uh, zero stars just because I wouldn't want anyone else to go there. <laughs> Maybe this one is a good one to enjoy from your couch and uh, through our video. Meet me. We're doing a scenic drive today. So we're headed into Cabeza Prieta and we're going basically all the way down here. <laughs> Imagine the border. And then we're gonna follow a road along the border. And check that out. That's part of this uh, National Wildlife Refuge. Stumbled upon a border patrol station. It's kind of interesting. We made it to Cabeza Pareda National Wildlife Refuge, and you do need a permit and you need to register at this kiosk. This wildlife refuge gets a very small amount of visitors a year. 2,500 visitors a year. Person in the vehicle, there must be a tag for each visitor displayed in the vehicle in clear view. This map shows where we came from. So we actually started in Ajo at the grocery store and we kind of snaked our way through this area. Uh, I don't know how we did it. And then we cut through the National Monument and now we are right here. So we're gonna take this El Camino del Diablo Road along the border and figure out which way we wanna go, if we wanna go up here or if we wanna go here. On Scenic Drive Day. El Camino del Diablo, known as the Devil's Highway, is a desolate and difficult 130 mile route that originally began near Sonoita, Sonora, and ended at Yuma, Arizona. In 1540, Captain Melacor Diaz was the first European to explore this area for fabled cities of gold. Jesuit Padre Isuibi probed the region from 1698 to 1702, searching for souls and a route to the Pacific Ocean. Drawn by the discovery of gold in California in 1848, hundreds of gold seekers and adventurers died from exposure and dehydration along this route. El Camino del Diablo became a National Historic District in 1978. Four-wheel drive high clearance vehicles are required for the road. There's some water area. There's a lot of tree and a lot of green. Cole has her drone up in the air inside the National Wildlife Refuge. We did check, it is acceptable. Looks like she's coming right at me. I wanted to go take a look. Some of these swarrows are absolutely huge down here. So I wanted to take a look, and see what it was like just to see how big some of these things are. So this cactus here is insane. 
It's absolutely huge. It's probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Its arms are bigger than most of the other cactuses. And there's a whole bunch more of them in here. I don't understand enough about what makes a cactus do what it does, but these cactuses are absolutely huge. These are probably some of the biggest swirl cactuses I've ever seen. covered in mud my hand is covered in mud I loved it when you were like oh this is bad as we were not going anywhere and you were hitting the gas they got some deep mud in the desert wow oh my god that was so scary I hope that does not happen again Good girl. Mm. that was really scary and that is why we do not buy a new truck is I'm sinking in mud because ours is awesome, okay? And extremely dirty. I feel like my side got dirtier than Kyle's. <laughs> So I just did my video when we want, thought that we were done with the mud and we went a little further and we sunk like probably a good eight inches in the mud and Kyle was able to back us up and he's walking around to see where we can go. I'm freaking out. I'm just sitting here because I'm freaking out because we're in the middle of nowhere on a scenic drive that gets less than seven visitors a day and there's nobody around i at least have two bars of mexican telcel because the border is a mile 
time I lacked. And my happy day is getting ready. see somebody did exactly the same. Souvenir mud in the desert. We made it to safety. I'm a bit over this drive now, and I think we still have a long way to go. That's one of the things that I really love about Kyle, is when stuff really gets bad, he just focuses and figures out what to do and I become of no assistance. I freak out. I took an anxiety pill and I just sat there. I was repeating the slogan, I am a rock in a sea of chaos while Kyle is out scouting on what to do. And fortunately, he grew up mudding in the woods and on trails and he knew what to do and he knows how to drive and I'm really thankful for him. Garmin. Why? We've entered the lava flow section of our journey today. It's very cool. Just black lava rocks all over. Including in the road. doesn't really know how to tell us to get out of here. He wants us to take uh, and add a dotted line that way. Okay. To get the... Go through Mexico. Okay. Cut through the border. <laughs> Cut through the wall. We're in the gate. Take Mex too. <laughs> so here's the map that they gave us. And the dotted line down here is the road that we're taking. The Diablo Road. And this is where we are now. This is the lava flows. I'm 
need you to focus on driving. Well, it's a fun, there's no more mud here. Oh my gosh. No, it just rocks. We went through sand traps and rocks and mud pits and what's next? Stop it. All kidding aside, I'm assuming that we'll make it out of this adventure without any difficulties. This is absolutely beautiful here. Uh, it's worth, worth the journey, but maybe just leave it for us and enjoy this one from your computer slash laptop slash cell phone. I'm ready to be home. This might be the first time I've ever driven across the lava field. Hopefully the last. Normally you just look at them. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm incredibly stressed out. This is, uh, I would never take this road again. I would never recommend anybody to take this road. And we were very, very ill prepared. And I wish that we were informed when we got information about the refuge because we started our journey at 11.30. That was over four hours ago. We had two bottles of water, a bottle of Diet Coke, a couple packs of crackers, and a couple fruit snacks. I didn't expect that this was gonna be a seven hour scenic drive, full of immense stress and possible harmful situations. I wish we could go 25 somewhere on this road. doesn't know where any of the places are for me to get a break. So not very kind. Yes, we need a break.
pull on my side. You're gonna my side. You're gonna my side. The sun is quickly setting. We've been out here for over six hours now. And right now, we are just trying to get out of here while it's still daylight. The road got better. It's a little wider. It looks like they actually maintained this part. We're now in the military field. We left the National Wildlife Refuge and then to get to the main highway road, you have to go through a military field and that's where we are now. My driver is had enough. He's ready to GTFO. Sun has officially set. We have a nice layer of dust everywhere covering us, covering the truck. Our Garmin finally could give us a route. at the uh, military area right onto the highway. Ah, pavement. So, watch watch so, her traffic now. So illegal. Oh my goodness. There's a new one. Oh my god. There's a lot of cars. yesterday. The truck got a little dirty from the harsh Arizona desert. There's a good layer of dust on top of everything. I don't know if you can pick up how dirty that is. Every one of these wipes almost instantly just turns very, very dark. Let's see if you can tell the difference between here and here. Pretty much any surface in our truck is completely covered in sand. We had the windows open because I would have wanted the windows down anyway. It was just kind of one of those nice things. But also our air conditioning doesn't work. So thanks, Beanie. The okay, I went and washed the car and uh, we have a lot of Arizona pinstriping from the drive. I'm not sure if these will come out with a coat of wax, but I mean, they're all up and down the truck. So we Googled the drive afterwards and found a couple blogs where people had, had done the drive and made their recommendations like, uh, take lots of food and water with you, get road conditions before you go, go with a partner and have two vehicles. <laughs> Uh, check in at the border patrol to let them know that you're out there. Lots of things. They didn't seem to have the mud that we had, so I don't know if it's just maybe not like that all the time, but still going through all the lava fields and climbing over the boulders and the sand pits and, and a lot of it was just driving down a wash for like 15 miles was just driving through a wash that was sand and there were a couple times where we stopped and it was actually challenging to get back going again because the tires just want to spin and so there were a few times where we thought we were actually stuck but our truck did awesome Kyle did awesome and I'm really proud of both of them <laughs> getting us to safety and out to civilization again and um I uh I don't ever want to go on that road again, that Devil's Highway. Like, anything with devil in it, just, you should know. 